Hey guys, it's Miss Timpson here, and I just wanted to record a quick video on um, dividing long division with two digit divisors. Um, the last video was on one digit divisors, and we're moving into two digit. This page that I'm on is page 101. This page is not part of your assignment. I'm just using these problems um, as example problems. We will also be doing a couple problems that are on page 107 that is part of the work that you turn in this week. So we're going to look at a couple of these problems to learn how to set up long division problems with two digit divisors. So I'm going to look at number two first. On number two, um, so I have 168. That is being divided by 12. The number that is being divided or split up is the number that goes inside what I call the doghouse. It goes underneath the division bar, okay? So then, well, I might need to give myself a little more room so I can, well, there we go. I'm gonna give myself just a little bit more room. My pen's a little off, um, so I can write numbers above. Okay, then the 12's gonna go on the outside. So, we're going to ask ourselves, how many times does 12 go into 1? 12 does not go into 1. 12 is smaller than 1. It does not go into 1 evenly. So then I'm going to move down and see how many times does 12 go into 16. 12 goes into 16 one time. So because I'm talking about the number 16, my 1 is going to go right above the 6. Okay, then 1 times 12 is 12. And remember, with our does, does McDonald's serve cheese burgers, we div divide, then multiply, then we subtract. So I get 4. Then I check to make sure, is this 4 bigger than the 12? No. And then I bring down. How many times does 12 go into 48? Four times. So four times 12 is 48. I subtract and I get zero. It is the same process, it's just bigger numbers. Now, if you want to check your answer, then what you would do is 12 times 14, and then you should get 168. If you do not get 168 and you multiply correctly, then that the answer would be wrong. Okay, let's look at number three. By 14 goes into 154. Okay. So 14, we talk about the first digit at first. So 14, does 14 go into one? No, it does not. So we move down one digit. Does 14 go into 15? Yes, it does. It goes one time. So I'm going to write a 1 right above the 15. Then, uh, if I my time sign. So I've already divided. Um, now I'm ready to multiply. 14 times 1 is 14. And I'm subtracting. I get 1. I'm going to bring down. Okay. Um, now 14 goes into 14 one time. 1 times 14 is 14 minus is 0. Sorry, my pen is just slightly off right now. So, if I wanted to check my answer on this problem, then I would do 14 times 11, and that would tell me the answer. Okay, let's do one more. Um, I'm going to do number five, because it seems like my pen's working better on the left side of my board. So, I'm going to write down 11. Goes into 165. When I read that problem on number five and it says 165 divided by 11, the thing that's being divided by goes inside the box. Okay? This is more so important. It is important in chapter two to know that, but eventually in chapter three, we will be dividing numbers that are decimal, or in chapter five, sorry, we'll be dividing numbers that are decimals. And um, sometimes that part gets confusing because sometimes the decimals we're dividing are smaller than what we're 
what our divisor, divisor is. So, 11. 11 goes into 1 how many times? 0. 11 goes into 16 how many times? 1 time. I'm putting my 1 above the 16. 1 times 11 is 11. I'm subtracting and I get 5. So I'm double checking. Is 5 smaller than 11? Yes, it is. I'm good to go. So then I can bring down. Okay, 11 goes into 55 five times. So 55 minus, oops, hands off. Let me see if I can fix that. Did not mean to mark through my 55. There we go. Minus 55 is 0. And then again, if I wanted to check to see if this was right, then I would multiply it out. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 5 is 5. When I drop down and switch to the other one, I have to remember the 0. Then I start over. 1 times 5, 1 times 1. And I add. If you're a box model person, you can check your answers um, in the box model if you want. And that would just look like you draw your box, okay, you break it up because um, you have in number 11 and 15, you have ones and tens. So I'm going to break it up into ones and tens and you could break up the 15. You could break up the 11 into ones and tens. And then you just multiply 10 times 10 is 100, 10 times 5 is 50, 10 times 1 is 10, and 10, or 1 times 5 is 5. Then you would add up those numbers like so. So I get a 5, that's 6, 1, so 165, and 165 is what we have. So we know we got our answer correct. All right, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next video on partial quotients.